I've actually been kind of doing the work I'm going to do with you. I've been doing it for the last three or four hours of today. As soon as I got off a call about six human needs, I went into this thinking about this. And for me, it seems very practical in a sense, but I need the creative energy and it's working on a website. So sometimes what we're doing that can be practical or even really intellectual may really need our creative energy. And so we're going to do a process tonight that brings that creative energy forward in us that we can call on at any time. And I like to, um, oh, let's see, we're still one minute before starting. I couldn't help myself. I'll do an official welcome in one minute. But you get, you get, the, you get the gist of it. All right. And tonight will be a group, like really a group coaching session. So I'm going to follow a format of group coaching that I follow, that I teach all my students to use in their group sessions. And I'm going to be hopefully guiding you through the process, being present with the process, and also letting you know each step, what phase we're in. So you can also be learning about guiding group coaching sessions yourself. So we will all be putting ourselves in these two roles, learning stages of group coaching and participating in the group coaching. So that, that's going to be fun and a little bit of a, hopefully not too much of a challenge. I've got some notes up on my computer I can refer to. And, um, and if you want to not note down when I say it's the next phase, so you have some words to remind you of each of the nine stages we're going to do, feel free to write, write things down whenever you want. Um, hello from Miami. Hello, Sylvia. So please, please introduce yourself to the group. Tell us where you're calling from. And I haven't seen any goals or projects be written into the chat there. So I would love to know, is there a project or a task or something in your life that you want to bring some creative energy to? And, and even just speaking it out loud to the group is the beginning of setting this intention. Yes, I'm building a program. A creative boost would be appreciated. Awesome. Oh, hello from Romania, from Washington State. Um, oh, wonderful. Leading a fitness day at church. That's great. A creativity and mindfulness course that, that someone's creating. That's wonderful. Writing a book. My coaching business. Excellent. And if, and if it's a big picture project, like a whole business, then let's get more focused here about um, one aspect of building that business, if you can, okay? Can stay very big or you can get more focused. It's up to you. Coaching parents and co-parenting skills with co-parenting skills. And let's all just take in each other's projects. This is important. Healing work. Um, it's going so fast, making content for YouTube, manifesting a soulmate, abundance. Oh, finishing an MBA, final project for that. Starting to do video vlogs, social media marketing campaigns, single fathers. Getting my first five one-on-one -on -one clients. I like that, very specific there. Um, writing two books about teenagers. Creating a yoga and coaching re retreat for women in Scotland. I think I know who you are, maybe. All right, great. So it's great to hear those projects. And, and, you know, whether you have one in mind or not, or for you it's more general, we can also use this process to kind of invoke what wants to be created by us. Um, I'm going to start by, by talking about group coaching first. So you kind of are going to enter that, that frame of learning about some of the stages. 
So the first stage is welcoming your group. So welcome everybody. I think we've already been doing that and new people are joining every minute. Now, now this is a big group. So when we have a big group online, over 150 people, I tend to read the chat shares instead of making everybody live. And the reason I do that is, is for sound reasons. Now in a smaller group, we might do a welcome and, and turn on individual members audio or video so we can see each other and talk. We might make all the squares into the format on Zoom here where you can see everybody at once. Feel free to do that, by the way. There's a little button called gallery view in your upper right corner. And, and it's a little bit more like being in a circle together, an online circle versus the presenter talking. And this is really different than a webinar. Even though I'm gonna be talking most of the time, it's a really different process than being in a webinar. Like I get to appreciate Tom's dog. Um, I, get to, I get to have a sense of where everybody is in their home. More important here is our connection and our, and our shared growth than really any idea or concept I'm presenting you with. I mean, I'm hoping, my intention is to give you a great experience tonight, but I know that it's much more about what we create together than about anything that I teach. It's not about teaching, it's about co-creating this space of creativity and calling this in. So one of the fastest ways I call in creativity is through the magician archetype. So I'm gonna be invoking, I'm gonna hopefully be invoking and helping you guys invoke your magician archetype. Now, for some people who may have a very strong religious belief system and the, the idea of the magician doesn't fit in to their, their religion or their culture, please use another word for that please bring in your God or any relationship you have with a higher power and, and respect that. Don't, don't ever like with any of, with any of these group experiences, I always want you to honor your traditions and, and what you need to honor before doing any of the work. So, um, I'm just checking the chat if anyone's commented on that. No worries if you can't be in video because you're in pajamas. I totally understand. That's how I go on group calls too. Um, so, so we start with the welcome. And we already started that process, hearing what projects, what creative goals the group has. And next, we're going to do, so that's stage one. Then we're going to do the next stage, number two, is an energetic connection practice. And everybody can do this in their own ways. I'm not wanting to get a little more comfortable in my chair. I usually have a pillow behind me. So there's three phases to this energy connection practice, and it's universal, self, and then connected to the here and now together in this group. So I like to close my eyes first for the universal. And I invite you to close your eyes and focus on your breath for, for a minute. Just really breathing into the moment, breathing into yourself here. And then allowing yourself to get very, very universal, whatever that means to you, universal. Maybe it's a sense of spaciousness, a vastness. Maybe it's imagining our earth in front of you and, and feeling that connection to being one of many, many, many people on this planet. And just as you breathe, allow yourself to feel very expanded, very open. And going from the universal, feel into your core right now. Maybe if it helps you to put a hand on your stomach or your heart or your head. And breathe into yourself right now, into this body, this time right here. Noticing where your attention goes right now inside of yourself.
Noticing if anything wants to relax. If anything requests a little bit more of your, your breathing, maybe to deepen. Maybe just to notice. And then bringing your attention to our work here tonight together, our whole community, opening your eyes and, and making your screen maybe into gallery view and just looking at all the people here tonight with you, creating in themselves this source of creativity, of magic, of resourcefulness, just like you're doing. Really take in, we're, we're a worldwide community. We have 175 people here tonight. There's a little arrow and you can flip through. Even if people don't have their video up, you can see their names. Just take each other in and wish each other well on, on this path of bringing in creativity and resources. Okay. So, that was stage two, and I like to do that in every group coaching, whether it's in person. Oh, I got a little energy in my throat there. I have a special, special water here. I find that the energy connection practice is really helpful for reminding everyone in the group, and again, I'm going to be talking from both positions here as if I'm teaching you to do a group process, which I am, and us doing the group process. It's like two sides of a hand. So when we do that, I'd like to know what you think. Does it help you enter the moment? Does it help you enter into connection? Because often we show up for a group meeting, whether it's in person, online, and we're still full of our day, full of whatever it is that's been happening in us. And we need to just sort of come together as a group and as an individual to be present. And from there, from this place, we can start to set our intentions for the evening. I am vibrating, wow, helped me focus, refocus, love it, great. And everyone can use their own language when they do this. Every time I teach any process, it's not that people need to repeat the language. It's more the energy and the intention of it. So most important there is expanding, coming into connection with self, and then feeling the connection of the group. And next, stage three, is setting an intention for yourself. And maybe some of you want to share. So what is your intention? Not just your project you're working on, but your intention for tonight something you would like to experience in yourself tonight. It could be greater connection. It could be a state of flow. It could be imagination, anything at all. Be in the moment, trust, openness, connecting with all the wonderful people, focus. Isn't that amazing to hear epiphany, greater understanding of the process, clarity, learning, growth, clarity, getting out of my way, learn, more vitality and power to bring goals to a close, inspiration, linking parts of a project with creativity. My intention is to open to my true nature and inviting in creativity, however that may look. Observation, learning. So I know you guys can read these, but I'm reading them out loud too, so we hear them spoken. I want you to feel the importance of that sharing. And if you haven't shared your intention, please share it. If for no other reason than to make it more real for yourself right now. When we share in a group, we're really putting our intention out there in a, in a different way than just when we feel it. Although I know some of us like to just go more internal and kind of close our eyes for the whole process. And I respect that too. I, I, I understand that wanting just to be very close in kind of while we do this work. Learning to do group coaching online, inspiration, triggered to act, imagination and creativity, develop skills, clarity and creativity, direction, receptivity and clarity. Beautiful, beautiful. And you can see there's a lot of shared intentions here, which is lovely. 
And, and by the way, it's also okay when you come to a group of like, you've had a bad day or you're having a hard time just to be vulnerable enough to say, you know, it was a lot just to get here. And I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm showing up. And so I'm very proud of myself for showing up. Many times when people come to a group, it, it's taken a lot to show up, whether it's online or in person. And we really want to appreciate that in ourselves. Okay, I also want you to honor yourself throughout the process tonight. If anything feels too much or too different, let my words roll off of you and choose your own language for it. You can always open your eyes and look around to get more grounded if we're doing a closed eyed process, or you can close your eyes if other people's eyes are open to go more internal, feel the ground with your feet, the energy in your body. That's always a resource to you. We use the body a lot in this method of group coaching because, well, it's our body. Um, so it's not just mind focus or intellectual. There's a lot of work in activation method group coaching that works with energy and with the physical body, as well as the ideas and the thoughts. There's obviously a lot of that, but we also want to always include the entire system. And for me, that's the energy body, the physical body, the thoughts, the beliefs, the relationships in one's life, the practices we do, the things we love and appreciate, that's all included here. Okay, so tonight what we're gonna be doing, and now I'm on step four, and it's 6.15, right on time. So step four, we're gonna be, it's to introduce the topic or process, and maybe for the group coach to tell a story. I don't have a story thought up for you guys. We'll see if one comes. Um, and basically I copied my outline of the nine stages and the only thing I really worked on was the process. Every other stage, I have just learned to, to go with the flow, to trust my intuition in explaining the stages and doing the process. And that's what I find the group coaches do. They learn these nine stages and then they can use it with any content piece. And the content piece is step five. So now we're on step four, introducing the topic. Um, so we've already, I've already introduced it, but I'll introduce it again. We're inviting creativity and flow into our, into our, I always use the word realm, but like into our world tonight, into our experience. So not only can we invoke it when we want to and make it a practice, this calling in creativity, presence, the magician archetype, but also so that we can I hope this doesn't sound too weird, but so we can allow it to speak to us and know what it wants of us. Sometimes we have big projects that are really in service to the world on some level. I know many people here have that. I could, I could see from the shares. And, and sometimes we have an emphasis on what am I going to do to make that happen instead of what does, what does the world, what does this project want of me? What does my creativity want of me? And so I'm hoping to kind of open up to allowing the magician to speak to us, allowing creativity to be felt, experienced, but also to have voice within us. So it's a very quiet kind of inner listening. Um, and beautiful, Pauline shared. Hi, Pauline, I miss you. Um, that is how I set up my book writing. I ask, what does my book want to say? Beautiful, so we're definitely on the same page there. I've known Pauline for some time, so good to have you here. Um, all right, so one of the things I noted here is that it's interesting to just notice in ourselves and in this group, who here feels that they're more introverted and who feels they're more extroverted? just to kind of start to be in that zone of feeling into what gives us energy. Do we like to do things that are quiet and, and more solitary to invoke our connection and our energy? I see a lot of introverts, both. Some extrovert there, great, a bit of both. 
And so just noticing in yourself, and all of us are of course a combination, and this is quite an extroverted thing to come to group, even if you're not going to talk, but it's also an introverted activity. And I like to honor both those kind of movements in all group coaching, because I think there are different ways to create connection. And ultimately being in a group, how it's very different than one-on-one -on -one coaching or attending a class or a lecture is that we are deepening connection as we have growth. So whether it's inner connection with ourselves or connection with the community, connection is really being highlighted here. So it's good to know where you lean and to honor that during the course of the group. I'm also wondering, just to invoke right now before the process, is there somewhere in your life where you feel the most energy, reserves, creativity, flow state comes to you? So by flow state, I mean times. There's been big books written on entering flow state, but it's like time doesn't matter so much when you're in a state of flow. It's about the process, not the outcome. So some people feel that when they're reading a book. Some people feel that when they're dancing. Some people teaching, reading, writing, cooking, meditation, exercise, yoga. Some people feel it when they're gardening. Some people feel it um, singing, doing art, climbing mountains, driving to work. Yeah, do you ever just like forget you're driving somewhere and then you're there? You've been in a flow state. So tonight will help us get into flow, Georgette. Great question. And it's good to know what are you already doing to get into flow and do you honor that in your life? That's why I ask, this is important. And if we were in a smaller group, I'd have everyone actually partnered off right now into, into groups of two so that they can share for five minutes about how they already enter into flow state and do they feel more introverted or extroverted so that they could be in partner groups. That's another stage in coaching that's harder to do when there are 192 people together. But when you're in a smaller group, like under 30 people, quite easy to do, even on this kind of Zoom platform. Okay. I have a very magical mug from my dear friend, Isabel, that, um, see the eyes? I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be drinking a lot of water tonight. My throat's a little sore. Okay. So now the process. So I actually, I've never done this before, but since we can't hear each other, if there's any music that helps you to relax or music that you find expansive or somewhat magical, like I was just listening to Peter, Paul and Mary um, song about, about dragons, Puff the Magic Dragon before getting on the call. I have like a, a very 1960s, 70s soundtrack that I listened to before doing archetype work. If there's, any, if there's any music that will help you, feel free to play that at low volume in your space, as long as you can still hear some of the directions. Okay, and there's been some <laughs> dark side of the moon. That's a good one. Ohm sounds kiss of a rose. I also love those metal drums, those huge metal drum music. That's really nice too. So um, let's, let's make sure that our spines are straight. We're going to be closing our eyes soon. But before that, just wherever you're sitting, see if you can get a little bit more support in your spine. Sometimes when I lead this process, energy will start to flow and you want it to kind of have space in your body to flow. You might also want to lie down for the process or get up and dance. You're totally free to use your body however you want during this. This is not like a still static meditation or anything. Give yourself permission to move. I'm actually going to invite your hands and your face and everything to join as we go. So. I like to close my eyes. I invite you to close your eyes or keep them open, however you wish. But beginning to imagine a landscape where, where magic resides, where, where this magician archetype, and an archetype is a universal energy that all of us can tap into. 
Some of us might tap into it regularly, some of us very irregularly. For some, it might have been in childhood that it was easier to find the magician, and some in doing one of those activities that you shared that made a flow state easy for you. So just imagine a landscape that sort of resonates, invites the magician archetype. Maybe it's where it's where that part of you, the magician, lives. Perhaps there's beautiful mountains, like I think of in the Star Wars movies where they, they're in Lake Como, Italy. I don't know where it is in the movie, but in, in the real world, it's Lake Como, Italy, and you see the water and the incredible mountains. For some, it might be near the ocean, or it might be surrounded by rain, or... Um, if you're ever on the east coast of the US, there's incredible lightning bugs. I always found those very magical as a child. But just be in your own landscape right now and welcome your body to move your hands to express the sense of the magician. For some, you might feel almost as though this archetype becomes you and just invite that, welcome that or you might feel you're sort of imagining it or feeling it. You don't need to see anything like a movie. It might just be a felt sense of, the, of, of that which is a little bit mystical or spiritual or very creative and artful. For some, it might involve a lot of color or sort of quality that's not of the normal world. Just invite whatever comes to you. And noticing your breath, breathe as if you were in this landscape right now. Maybe you are there. And invite any part of your life into this landscape. So as the magician in this place, where things are just a lot easier. Perhaps flowers grow very quickly or the sky goes from storm clouds to sun to rain. However magic is, in, is experienced by you in this landscape, invite some part of your life that you want to include in the magic. Maybe it's that project, maybe it's a person or a role in your life. Invite it into this landscape and see what it does there. This landscape is full of metaphors. So a website might become a tree. A book might be a bird sitting by your side. This landscape is here to support you. And whenever you need, either close your eyes or open your eyes, feel into your body, notice how the body feels, invite relaxation, invite expansion. What, what are the elements of relaxation? Does creativity relate to relaxation in you? How does creativity relate to relaxation? Is there a smell? Is there a sound? Is there a movement that invites this relaxed creative flow? And just imagining that this creative flow were inside of you right now, would it have a way it moves? Would it have a color? Would it have a sort of gesture or, or movement in the body? Like for me, it's a filling up and a bouncy and it's very light and warm, but it's also cool. And, and it wants to move, it wants to express. So just notice how it is in you and, and ask it, what do you want for me? Creativity, 
magic. What do you want for me, for this person? And see what it gives you. It might give you, it might give you a thought, it might give you a feeling, it might give you a symbol or an idea or an object. What do you want for me? This creative movement, this magical ability to create transformation and growth and mobility and presence and expansion. What do you want for me? What do you wish for me? This person, this core person, speak your name. And it might be a very quiet answer. It might be, it might be an answer in a feeling or an image or a symbol or a smell. Whatever it is, just allow yourself to receive that. And take that that creativity gives you and apply it first in the body. Where would you like to have more of that? And then in your life, is there, is there a time of day that you want this energy? And imagine yourself in that time of day in your life, in your home, or your office, or with your family, or community, at work. And imagine this energy as, it, as it's brought into being within you, in the person you are. It's integrated in you, and it allows you to interact with your world with more flow, with more ease, with whatever qualities that the magician archetype that creativity give you. And just imagine that for a moment. Maybe you see yourself interacting with another, with your computer, with your neighborhood, however it presents. Maybe you're given a glimpse of the past or of the future and allow that, allow whatever comes in. See that it's a resource. And if you go back to your creative landscape for a moment, bring, bring that part of your day with you to that landscape, join them. So maybe your office is suddenly in a meadow of wildflowers. Maybe your family is surrounded by gorgeous mountains. Whatever it is, let them, let them meet, let them, let them be friends, let them support each other. And now invite the magician archetype to, to expand your vision of your, of your project, of your, of your creative resources. Allow it to just ease into that view, whether it's visual or energy or just a felt sense of this project in your life, whatever that is. And look at the project from the sense of the magician archetype inside of you. And take time for yourself right now to notice. Notice the goodness it brings, the project brings. Notice where a little more creativity is needed and and give, give a metaphor to that creativity, like, like as though you could just create, create a, wonderful, a wonderful recipe for creativity out of stardust or anything else and bring that to the part of the project. Maybe it needs resources of other people. Let creativity bring those people into your awareness. Maybe a skill, and just as though you could reach into a sorcerer's hat and pull out a skill, bring that skill and just allow it to resonate with your project. 
anything can happen here. So you might see anything at all in your project. You might see a problem in your project. Hold that problem, notice it, allow it to be there. See what it wishes to transform into. See if it has a lesson or a teaching for you. Let it speak to you like a friend. You might see a strength, a resource, a calling within your project or activity. Let that resonate with you. Let that feel a kinship with you, a partnering, that resource, that strength. And then spread it all out. Spread your project even further than you ever imagined. Whatever it is, even the most simple project, let it expand out a bit into the world. Notice who it will affect. Maybe just a family member who sees your sense of victory and joy from completion or from the process or from the creative flow. And notice how that person benefits. Or maybe you're seeing a much larger community. Notice how they benefit. And be with that. Let the hands invoke that sharing of your creativity, that sharing of your resources. Even that sharing of any resistance so it's not just yours. Share it with this community right now. And let's all take a moment to feel each other's support. Breathe with that support. Imagine what support feels like as an energy. And take with you any symbols, any images that remind you of creativity, that remind you of the magician. Imagine that you have an incredible bag right now that you can just take from this experience and put into your bag. And notice if there's any practices you already do in your life that invoke this state. Really. Give them acknowledgement, nod to them, enjoy them, and put them in your bag as well. We're going to revisit them. And when your bag feels full, maybe it's a over-the-shoulder purse, or maybe it's a backpack, or maybe it's a briefcase, or maybe it's a it's a pillowcase. I don't know what your bag looks like. But imagine your bag full of the resources of creativity, of magic, of acceptance, of connection. And placing your hands somewhere on your body, just feel into your own presence right now. And let's take three deep breaths together, breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. We're gonna keep the energy, let go of the air. Last breath. And when you're ready, imagine a big oak tree. Of course, you're going to continue breathing just normally now. Imagine a large, beautiful tree is behind you. And you can feel its energy, its strength, its rootedness. You can allow that tree to give to you through your spine, through your legs, into the earth, feeling that connection with the ground, whether it's your bed or your chair or your feet on the floor, feeling that connection with earth, that grounded presence that gives you strength and gives you this container to experience flow in while staying well grounded with great boundaries, with presence.
And when you're ready, open your eyes. Beautiful. Now taking your time, kind of coming back into this, this space, the magical landscape is still with us sometimes for quite a while. So that was stage number five of our group coaching where we did a process together. Now we're gonna share the experience. So sometimes we can really deepen and solidify that experience through sharing it with our group. So let's, let's welcome, the chat is open. Please share anything your magician showed you, anything about your magical landscape, basically anything you want others to witness. It's, it's very special to be able to have witnesses to what our magician archetype is like for us. And you know, I didn't ask a lot of questions about your actual magician. Maybe that was given to you, maybe it wasn't. Maybe your magician had a beard or was a man and you're a woman. Maybe it was a woman and you're a man. Maybe it was an animal. Usually I do all that. I don't know why that didn't come tonight. It was much more about landscape and about, about kind of an attitude for me. Beautiful. Thank you, Cindy, for sharing. My magician showed me the landscape in front of me helps feel centered and present. I was a magical unicorn in the clouds, flapping my wings and moving my feet. I'm flow with my partner and dog. Oh, wow. There's so many great shares right now. So, so as, as we read each other's shares, just allow everyone's magician to be really honored and, and appreciated. Sometimes actually hearing what someone else's magician is like then deepens our own experience. And don't worry if your magician had no like visuals or big experiences, that's okay. It can be much more just sort of a zone of expansion. It can be just a quieting down, a groundedness. It doesn't have to be any one thing. Lots of color, wildflowers in a field surrounded by mountains. My creativity wanted me to experience love and open my heart. What a great message. My magician showed me being with the one that I dream of being with rather than my projects. Wow, that's, that's amazing. Colors, the sun was smiling. Okay, I'm going, I'm going back up. I got an image of returning to my magical landscape and, and we're in celebration with many, many people. That's lovely to bring in the others into the celebration. Ah, uh, that when I operate on my soul level, everything will flow together and makes me feel calm and joyful. My mental health ministry as a bouquet of flowers, red roses. How beautiful. So her ministry became that bouquet of flowers. I went to a park in my hometown where I spent a lot of time as a child. I have not been there in 30 plus years. It was like I was really there. The smells, the humidity of the moist earth. That's so great, John. I felt a little bit of that when I invoked the fireflies. I remember I grew up in Maryland where there were these really beautiful nights because summers were so hot in the day that we went out at night. We appreciated all the hours of night and all the fireflies, the lightning bugs. They're not called fireflies, right? They're called lightning bugs. I have to say, I even collected them sometimes in jars by my bed. I wouldn't do that now, but I loved it as a seven-year-old. Uh, my magician is my higher self. I have a throne and light and water there. It is my power place. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm, we're, gonna, we're gonna keep this chat open now so you can feel free to read everyone's shares. But I am gonna move into the next, the next stage, which is about choosing actions to take now. So, this is a little bit of a switch, right? 
we were in that creative space. We got more resourceful. We created a bag of some kind that we took things with us. Now let's, let's bring in the other part of ourself that, that plans a bit, that decides what actions we want to take. Maybe it's the first step of your project. Maybe your magician gave you a first step. Maybe not. I don't know if we asked it that. But is there a first step to your project? What is that? Or what's an action you can take right away? Feel free to write this for yourself. You can share it or keep it private, whatever works for you. Maybe there's an emotional tone that comes with your actions. Maybe you've been very focused and driven and you notice now that you could do better work if you were more relaxed and open. I'm thinking of that person that got the message of the heart open. So if there's an emotional goal you have with your project, how would that move into an action? So what's the first step for like getting old and new participants on board? What's the first step involved in doing that? Getting rid of old thoughts. What's a new thought that will help you? What's a new thought? I'm just giving you like little bits of coaching here as I read your shares. Ah, this is very specific. Pauline shared schedule time to go through the instructions of setting up my channel. Beautiful. So just planning the time. Forgive myself and others. Wow, that's a really deep first step. Yeah. Move with more grace, the duality of focus and play. Be open to possibility rather than the feeling pressure to build a coaching practice. I love that. So bringing in that emotional goal, that state of being. Stop trying to be perfect. These are really great action steps. Now, can they get even more targeted into something you'll do tomorrow or this week that is that action step? So if it was moving with more grace, is there, is there a practice you do? Is it putting on music and, and moving with that? Is it something in your life that you're going to make, make a priority to do tomorrow? Maybe just for five minutes, maybe for half an hour. Every great project and enterprise is built up of little parts. So this is the time where we see the little parts and we see the emotions we wanna to bring to those parts and the energy. And creativity and flow and the magician archetype, what it does is it, is it opens us up to a more real, more um, by real, what I mean is the deeper truth in us of want, wants to come forward. Often when we struggle with a project, there's some level of honesty I find that's, kind of being blocked. And when we invite the magician archetype, it shows us where we need to let go a little. It might show us where our resistance is and how to play with it. What might want to be transformed. And sometimes we get so driven and focused on the end goal, we're not able to brainstorm the smaller parts of the project. So that's what I'm hoping this really helps invoke in you. So it's very creative on one side the process but then it's very practical as well dissolve anxiety and expecting the worst setting boundaries and taking time for myself that's huge so what is it like to set healthy boundaries right now you know all of us can use that what's it like to have a boundary maybe a boundary of time around your project maybe a, a boundary of um some other kind, but invite, are there any boundaries that would help you, every single one of you? One person wrote that, but I thought, wow, that's a resource for many people, a healthy boundary. So great, great share that getting stuck in, I am creative in macro and struggle, struggle to bring it into the step-by-step -step process. So 
allowing any expectation to leave right now of being right or doing it in a certain way, write down, if that's your struggle, write down every little step you can imagine. And then I recommend, I'm kind of a paper and pen person, cut them up into strips. You could probably do this online some way if you, if you knew how, but, or get note cards or little, I'm, I'm full of these little post-its for this reason. Organize the little post-its of actions. Think of just actions that take less than 30 minutes. And maybe some of those actions will be repeated and see if you can position them on, on a paper. That's kind of another strategy for another day. We'll have a group session where we work with the post-it strategy. Um, all right, there's so many wonderful shares here. Set a timer for the post-it notes so you can go fast, yes. All right, so just being aware of our time together, because I know some of you only have an hour, I wanna make sure I get to all of the steps here. So hopefully now you have a list for yourself of some actions to take that were helped by your magician. I'd like you to commit now to one action, one thing you're committing to in the next two weeks that you're gonna do. And I invite you to share it with the group so we can all support you in your commitment. And again, if we were a smaller group, I would divide us into pairs so we'd have an accountability partner. Um, but there's 170 of us and I'm afraid if I split us up, it'll be hard to get us back into the same room. Um, okay, but we can, we can right now in the next two weeks, one action you're committing to for your project. And then we're going to power it with what the magician gave us to practice coaching someone, serve powerfully on my coaching call tomorrow, compile a list of practitioners I'm going to reach, buy me a rose, oh, I lost that one, create content for my workshop. I'm going to practice the magician archetype again um, at, with, a vol with a guinea pig, <laughs> ask for volunteers finalized first draft of my book. Now that's a big one. Um, they're all big, they're all big. Arrive on page 100 of my book, close a deal, help people in the process, beautiful. So many there, okay? And if you don't wanna share it, that's okay too. Hold it for yourself, but honor that, really honor that commitment you're making. If it's too big, make it smaller right now. If it's too small, make it a little bigger. So, so that was step eight, the commitment that we're going to take home with us. Now, step nine is to kind of close this process together, but then I'm going to take questions. Don't worry. I'm going to stay with you, but I wanted to model for you the way these nine stages work in an hour. And yes, I'll repeat them all at the end. Okay. But the closing of, of our very large global circle tonight. I'm gonna invite you if you, I, you know, probably I should learn how to teach these things with my eyes open. I really like to go inside for this. So I'm gonna just honor that. And thinking of that action you're gonna take for your bigger project, I want you to bring in that tool, those resources that the magician gave you and maybe some new ones will present right now. But I really wanna invite your tools, your resources, Maybe there was a symbol, a metaphor, maybe, maybe there was a color, or maybe it was that garden from childhood or the mountain or a flow of your hand or your head. I don't know what it was, but some resource that came to you is a way to re-enter the state of magic, of creativity, of flow. So, Allow one to really speak to you right now as a priority to put you into that state of flow and creativity and connection with the magical within you. And notice when in your life would it help you to bring this in? Would it help you when you're planning? Would it help you when you're with your family? Would it help you when you're relaxing? It might not have anything to do with your project 
let's just notice when the state of being of the magician, of the creative one, of the expanded one, what times in your life and your day would it be helpful to invoke that? And what's a simple way to call that in? It could be one image you think of, it could be one gesture, a sound, a smell, a symbol. For me, it's the hand moving in a figure eight. When I want to enter a resourceful state, eyes open or closed, I do this. I've done this for 10 years. I do this before coaching, before teaching, before lots of things, just to get into that, into that state physically. And let's see if, um, I'm just reading my notes here. If, if there's any practices that you wanna share with the group that, that that symbol or gesture or metaphor will give you more energy to do. That you, in the beginning of tonight, you thought of those practices you do that give you relaxation and creativity. Is there anything else coming up now that wants to be part of your life and your process of invoking more creativity? Any practice? And, and maybe it's something very logical, like sitting down and planning for five minutes every day. Maybe it's something very physical, like running for three minutes or doing jumping jacks. I don't know. I don't know what it is for you, but if anything comes to you, just take one last minute to note that down for yourself. And I would like to know what gestures, what symbols work for you. Yin yoga, visualization, journaling, meditation. I do dishes. <laughs> Automatic writing daily, wow, tapping. Three deep, slow, long breaths, swimming. You know, swimming is so interesting. I read a study that when people swim, they are more creative for a certain amount of time afterwards. And I noticed that in the summer when I swim, I'm much more likely to write after swimming. Writing comes more easily to me. So there's been studies done that actually swimming activates that more than other forms of exercise. Although I think all exercise actually activates our creativity, at least in my experience, even walking for sure. All right, beautiful shares here about practices. And any symbols come to anyone, symbols or gestures or smells. I've worked with people that like, like it sounds funny, but sniffing tea, they keep a canister of tea they like, like on their desk in their office, and they smell it to help them enter into the state of the magician. Or it could be a flower, it could be cologne, essential oils, that's, yeah, a glass of wine. Now that'll definitely bring about a certain kind of magic. <laughs> but you know, one, one needs to be careful and not get fooled by one's brilliance when using substances, that can happen too. Um, just one. <laughs> I like that. Um, and can you use the same process for all archetypes? Yes, in different ways. Absolutely. Um, we have sort of different pointers for different archetypes and I'll, I'll invite you, you know, to look at that more with me in the future. But, but as a general kind of guided experience, yes. This works with many different archetypes. Oh, feeling the rose's velvety touch mm, and smelling it. Wow, I love that. Wonder Woman pose, victory pose, and one other pose I like. That's great. Okay, guys, so we're just at the hour, so you can kind of see how the flow went. Now going more into kind of teaching the stages, I'm gonna repeat them to you. And gosh, just one last question. I can't, I can't let it go. It came to me and I think it's important. When has the magician archetype served you in the past? I just want you to give it respect and acknowledgement for serving you at some point in your life. And maybe it was in a totally different role than your current project. Maybe it was as a parent. Maybe it was in childhood. Maybe it was when you were a young adult. 
but just notice that and let's thank our magicians and thank all our magicians here and notice if they've ever really come through for us in the past or that they do right now. I think it's really important before saying goodbye to the magician to give it our, our gratitude and our, and our just our good wishes. Thank you, magicians, all of us, all of these parts of ourselves. I'm always so grateful for creativity. It's almost like creativity just lands on one sometimes if you're open to it. There's a famous musician that says he carries around his guitar always because he never knows when the song is gonna come and he needs to be ready. No matter what else is going on, the song is there. He says, all right, everybody leave the room. I've got to compose now. And, and, I, and I feel that kind of respect for creativity. Artists know how to do that. The rest of us sometimes have to develop that respect and that reverence. But that's why for in so many cultures, for so many hundreds, if not thousands of years, it's been seen as a muse, this creative energy. So just to kind of, kind of give that respect to your magician right now before we say thank you. And now we go on with the call. Okay. Um, so the stages of, of group coaching that I find can be used in live groups and online groups with slight variations based on the intention of the group and, and the sort of dynamics, whether you want a lot of sharing to go on or you want a more interactive process, that will depend a lot on how many people are there. So you can see tonight, we shared through the chat. I read the chats. I didn't partner you like I normally would in a group of less than 30 because of logistics, because I didn't want the technology to get in the way. Um, but I did really honor connection and sharing as a community, even with so many people, I think it's actually amplified. So the stages are the welcome, learn where people are from, what, what they want to share that day or evening. You know, if often there'll be a group member that's really got something going on. And before the group even starts, they, they're raising their hand to tell everyone something. I honor that during the welcome, if, if a community member feels that way. It's also important to set up in the welcome with a new group some policies and kind of rules of behavior. So one of them that's really important to me is that we all respect each other, um, that we, we also respect each other's time. So uh, when we have sharing, it might be limited to just one or two minutes and we're gonna have to respect that so everyone in the group can have their turn. Um, that no one's here to convince anyone else of, of something. So these are just types of policies or kind of rules that you might wanna spell out to a group during the welcome, especially the first time you're meeting. So then we went into the energetic connection practice, the universe, the self, the group. And then number three is intention setting. And that's when I would give each group member one minute to share. Or if it's a group of 30, divide up into three groups and the 10 people all take one minute to share. And someone will have a timer because if you're gonna do an hour group, you do need to keep that to about 12 minutes. Okay, and then Number four is introducing the topic or process. You might want to relate it to yourself to tell a story there. You might want to bring up like a sister topic. Like tonight I brought up introverted and extroverted and, and what situations in our life do we relax in? That was sort of already invoking the process. That was the beginning. And then number five, the process, whatever the process is in some groups, that might be an exercise, it might be a game, um, but it's helping the person get into their own state with it. It's not a lecture. So group coaching is not lecturing at your group. It's not motivational speaking. It's not teaching. It's including them in an experience and it could be partner work, but you see how it's different? And, and the other thing I wanted you to notice with these nine stages, it's much easier because to be a group leader, because in the process part, 
you're doing that kind of more leadership for about 15 minutes, not for an hour. So a lot of people put off leading a group because they think they have to make an hour of content. Nope, it's about 15 minutes that you're practicing that more guided leadership. Like in tonight's case, it was a little bit more like a guided journey or meditation. And then, and in some group processes, that process part might be a lot of journaling or um, using the body movement or creating art. It doesn't have to be guided meditation. It doesn't have to be just intellectual. We can use lots of resources. And then um, after number five, the process, number six is sharing about the experience. So getting people to share about their experience in the process. And the group leader should always be really elevating and supportive and, and sometimes point out when something could be a little bit more um, exact or a little more expanded, ask a question. That's where your individual coaching skills can come a little uh, in a little handy there when it comes to um, stage six, sharing about the experience. And then stage seven, actions to take. Learn, learn what the group wants to do that week. Sometimes that might be given by the group, the group coach, like a suggestion this week to keep this growth going. I'd like everyone to see if they can do this practice every day for five minutes. Or it might be more like tonight, getting the group to decide their own actions. And then step eight, commitment to what they're gonna do. Really, like people could turn to their partner or you could partner them in groups of two and make a commitment, or it can be in the chat, or if in a, in a circle in person, you can go around the circle and make a commitment to yourself that's witnessed by the group. And then always do a closing, a closing, either grounding, protective visualization, community closing, but something to say, okay, our, our group has come to a close now and then we can move into social time. So I do think a lot of people join a group to make friends and have community. So if you do like an hour of group, it's nice to have half an hour or even a full hour of social time. Now you might have some expectations set for what social time looks like for your group. You might not, it depends on how you, how you are. I've, I've led groups where social time is tea around a table or everyone brings food, or social time might be another kind of healing work, like sharing Reiki with each other. Um, social time can mean a lot of different things to different people. It could be dancing. So give some thought to what you want social time to be like. But that's also time where you're not on as the leader. You, you're not guiding the social time you create a social atmosphere of some kind and you enjoy it yourself too. I think that's important or you, you'll feel too much like you have to control the way people are socializing. And some people who don't want to socialize will leave before that. Some people you'll have to tell them it's time to go. And, and I got a question about Zoom. You know, I really recommend that you take trainings in any format you want to use in your group coaching or any kind of work you do um, hire a coach who can teach you or Google it, <laughs> watch a YouTube video. It would be too complicated for me to give those instructions. But, um, if you are a group coaching student, I'm happy to do that in our next meeting, but, but please do learn all the settings. And, um, that that's just like with any technology you're using, learn as much as you can. I know when I started leading this, I would hire a person who was an expert on Zoom because it made me so nervous to be managing that as well as the content part. And then after a while, we realized, the team realized it was really simple to use. We didn't need any kind of expert to make those rooms or anything. So any other questions or shares, feel free to go to manage participants or you're, you're just participants, I have managed participants. Click that and you can raise your hand by your name. If you wanna ask me any questions live, I'd love to talk to you. 
um, my eyes are kind of darting around here to read the messages also. Oh, good question. How do you charge for a session without someone sharing your Zoom login with someone else without them paying? So um, that has never been an issue for us. Of course, you can take attendance. And if you notice that someone is on, then, then you can, um, well, you can always take someone off who hasn't paid or let them know you'll meet with them after class to set up a payment plan. But um, there are also systems you can put into place where to get the details of your Zoom, they have to pay first if you're looking to broadcast to many people. And um, Jeremy just told me if the link doesn't work, you might need to type it in yourself, groupcoachleader.com. Okay. Do you teach how to grow the group? We have many modules on marketing, how to do joint ventures, how to do Facebook, how to use different ways of growing your group and sharing with your community and connecting to others to create more um, wideness in your practice. I'm, I'm still in the metaphors here tonight. When I think of growing, I think wide, reaching out to many. And you know, I think it's important to notice how much in our world today with social media can be a very isolating experience for many people. And also more and more people are home kind of alone using the computer and groups in person and also online give, give kind of an antidote to that. So I see groups as being essential to our connection and lowering our anxiety in general as as a society that we have gotten a little bit um dispersed and isolated even if we're spending a lot of time in social media that when we take on being a group leader i think we're really doing a service of good to many people who feel disconnected so i feel like actually even if your group had no processes no growth things it was just holding space for individuals to be together and share what they're feeling and thinking about and support each other, that would be a beautiful, beautiful thing that many people want a group like that. So um, I love doing the processes. I love coming up with the growth, growth kind of techniques to offer. And also I want you to know that your presence as a group leader is probably the most important thing that you're giving to the group is just that ability to hold the space and say, we're all here, we're all connected. Um, for example, when I started the meditation group a year ago that some of you have been part of, that it's, it's a group that has served now 17,000 people in some way through those group meditations. I had no idea of what the meditations would actually look like. I had no process in mind. I just was really called to create a space where people could share about their own spirituality. And I actually was expecting a lot more shares from others, but sometimes it became so large that I had to step in and do a little more meditation guidance. My initial intention was just to create kind of a space where everyone could share. And then it became clear that people showed up and wanted to be given a process. <laughs> so I stepped into that role. But um, whatever it is that your intention is, also to stay in that creative flow of, of seeing what the groups you create, what they need and want of you. Sometimes groups kind of transform and move and end up being something that they weren't in the beginning. And that's beautiful as well. All right, guys. Well, it was so good to be here with you. I, I'm feeling that expanded connection from being with all of you. And I hope some of you are too. I'm gonna just kind of go through and look at everyone's faces. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Oh, so good to see you guys. And I so appreciate when you do turn on the video. Hi, Shandi. <laughs> 
And I see Nazalie there. I miss you. Was just with you for the weekend. And Anne and Adriana and Stephanie and Kong. Beautiful to see you guys. All right. And your names. Wonderful to see people's names too who are in their pajamas. So wherever you guys are in the world tonight, I hope that you felt a little bit of magic, a little more creativity and, and some clarity about your project and your practices as well. Okay, have a wonderful rest of your day or evening or afternoon. And maybe we'll all join together in, in a magician's dream tonight and we'll all be around a circle sharing some, some magic, who knows. Okay, take care everybody, bye-bye. And feel free to write in any messages to me here. I'm gonna just leave it open for a while so people can continue to share and write in. And feel free to join the group coach training. I would love to work with you more closely and, and help you to really become a leader in whatever community, whatever field you're looking to expand. Okay. Bye everybody. I'm just gonna sit and read and read the chat for a while. Take care. <laughs>